Welcome everyone back to Rule the Waves, episode number three of my tutorial and gameplay videos. I want to cover this uh, just in case I didn't make it very clear. To move ships, I right click and then you go to move, move ship. There is another mechanic for it. I think you do something here. Yeah. So if you want to look at the ships by their current location, you can do it this way. It'll show you that, okay, I have these ships. Um, it looks like it'll be organized by uh, ship type, which is good. Something a little unfortunate is it looks like when I scroll the side window, the main map also <laughs> scrolls. Uh, that's, um, well, I don't know what to say. But I'll, I'll be honest, I typically use the location here because I'm interested in knowing, okay, how's their crew status, or what's their status like, you know, crew quality. Uh, there's a lot of things to look at um, that you want to see in this screen that you're not going to see just by the name and the type. Sometimes you don't even remember the class, and that's important. Like, you want, like, ships to be together. So... Okay, so but, but because we have the freedom to choose anywhere for these guys to be, that's especially going to be important for our destroyers because the, with their short range, they can't do strategic moves um, in wartime. So we'll just um, adjust them where I want them to be right away. I think I'll leave two on the east coast. I'll put two into... Um, actually, how long are these destroyers going to take? Only four more months. Okay, I'm expecting that we can't get to war in four months. We'll see. I mean, it's possible I'll be wrong, but let's go ahead and just move. Hmm, I think two destroyers. Let's move maybe three. I can't. Let's just do two destroyers to Southeast Asia. So you ready to click and then this is the destination. This is all the ships in that area. You can move more ships with this group of ships. It doesn't matter if you move them in a group or if I just do each one of these individually. Um, one thing that is very confusing that took me a lot, <laughs> quite a while to figure out is if you do assign a movement order, which we'll do here. So those two are now, if I pull this location out, well, typically We'll see this later, that they'll have an arrow um, saying that they're going to Southeast Asia. Um, and we will be able to cancel movement in a similar manner by doing cancel ordered moves. But you have to select this unit if this is the one you've selected to move ship and you have a, given an incorrect movement order. You have to move it back first and then here hit cancel movement order. So it's kind of confusing how you cancel movement orders, but that's fine. All right, so I want a, light, a heavy cruiser there. I have two destroyers. We're going to want probably two destroyers in the west coast just to cover all of my different areas of operation. And this one will start in the Caribbean. And he'll get another buddy in the Caribbean as soon as we finish producing three more. So we'll have two destroyers at each of our each of the locations where we have some kind of territory. Because again, on the map, we have two territories here. We have, well, four territories here. We have a lot here and a lot here. So that's our, our four. And I think, the, what is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's 12 regions in the map. And the United States has territories in four of them, which is good. I mean, that's not such an insane number. If you look at the French or the, especially if you look at Great Britain, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. <laughs> they have uh, territories in ten, so that's over double. That's why I think that even with their budget being higher, it's actually kind of difficult to manage putting all those ships around. So I prefer to play as the United States. I can consolidate my forces a little better. Okay, um, so that's the destroyers. We'll probably do the same thing with the minesweepers. How many do we have here? Four, another four. 
and then we'll have two extras. Well, that's nice. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll send two to each area. And then I guess we'll have two free to move with um, whatever attack group is going. Minesweepers are good in that they lower the number of mines in the region that, that they occupy when they're at war. So if you don't want your ships getting hit by mine, it's kind of nice to have at least one minesweeper trailing with them. We'll do the same thing here. Two to Southeast Asia. I'm just shift clicking. You can control click, the, you know, the same way you select anything these days. It works here. Let's move these to West Coast. These to the Caribbean. And we'll leave all four of the rest of these on the East Coast, which is probably what, where I will leave my battle fleet for the time being. So, yeah, my battleships will probably stay here. I think everything else is fine. Oh, we might want to put at least one of our light cruisers in Southeast Asia. And we'll also want to put another light cruiser in the Caribbean. Because I'm going to be using my light cruisers for convoy raiding if we get into a fight in the beginning. Okay, good. So we're all set up. I'm happy with this setup. So let's go ahead and hit continue. I think we're finished selecting ships under construction, yes. Good, well, <laughs> and without any flair or pizzazz or anything, we're now into the real game. So congratulations, we've made it after only three videos. <laughs> okay, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my research so that research is 10%. Um, you can't go any higher than this. And from what I've seen, it looks like most people tend to set their research percentage to 10. And I certainly always, in my games, always prioritize research. The next thing we're going to think about doing is setting priority levels for some of these. So the machinery development, just in general, it lowers the, the weight cost of your engines. So there's a little button if we go into any of these designs here. Oh, let me show you the open design for rebuild. You can hit replace machinery. Now that's not gonna do anything right now. Okay, it somehow did. Interesting, I assume it wouldn't do anything because we haven't, oh, all it did was because we chose to replace the machinery with, even though it was re replacing it with the same thing, it would cost money. So it's 366 to just do nothing to rebuild. I don't know why, but if you hit this, well, it automatically costs another 13,000, even though it didn't change anything. But this machinery weight, 1801, um, that's what you can decrease slowly. So that's what the research on the top usually does. And the armor does the same thing, but obviously for the armor. And hull does the same thing for the hull. So those, these are really nice. I like to put these to high priority. Fire control, I put to high priority. And I may, at some point in time, decide to lower some of these things. For example, I probably can leave machine de machinery development on medium for the time being because we don't need machinery to be super well developed until we start doing refits which won't be for at least six seven years but fire control is just something you want to get the best fire control this is how you hit other ships so it's very important i'm going to go ahead and put subdivision and damage control on low the idea here is if my ships get hit and they sink well they shouldn't have been hit to begin with that's not at all a good line of thinking but uh, I just prefer the focus to be on things which will make my ships better. This is generally stuff, a lot of this stuff, um, you can research and it affects your designs that are already in existence. So my priority is going to be first and foremost how to start building better ships. For example, naval guns is something we want on, naval, on high. And here's the list of the naval guns we currently have. So you can see that 10 inch we have zero quality. It's really important that, and it's just luck, you can't specify individual um, research in here, which I find a little unfortunate. It'd be nice to like specify I want high quality six inch guns, which is something I think a naval commander could do. I mean, if you're the fleet admiral, I think you could say, hey guys, we need better this type gun. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll just hope that they get that for us. 
So I'll put that in a high priority. Fleet taxes, fleet tactics is pretty important. Um, ASW I'm going to put to low. Same thing with submarines. I'm just not as worried about it. And high explosives. Interesting. I think, oh, explosive shells, here it is. And I'm playing on version 1.22. The last game I played was in version 1.21, so things could be a little bit different. Now, the priority level here, um, if you set everything to high, it's the same thing as setting everything to low or every, everything to medium. It's just relative to the other categories. So if I set um, something high or low, it doesn't affect, it just affects the percentage of my own research points that I collect that potentially go to that. So if you set everything to high, it doesn't make a difference. Good, so let's get up this to 10% and hit OK. I think that's more or less what I want. Uh, turret and gun mountings, maybe we should set this to high as well. Those are pretty important. And ship design to high. OK, so <laughs> we snuck in a few more things right at, the butt, right at the buzzer there. But I'm pretty happy with this, so we'll hit OK. Next thing I want to do is start getting our ships trained. So I'm going to set them up for gunnery and night warfare, which is going to cost us a little bit extra. And I've never messed with this stuff. I suppose that there's some good reason to do it, but I, I just let it like auto ammo selection. <laughs> I didn't even check this box in my last gameplay, but we'll just do that because I'm not going to choose these things. So, and we'll hit apply. Yes, and the training will take 12 months to go into effect. That's fine. We want our true uh, crews trained um, well in these things. The reason why I didn't choose torpedo warfare is because your torpedoes suck so badly in the beginning. I find that these two, I don't know the difference between checking and, unche and not doing that better training, but my assumption is these are the two that I would want. You can't check all three. You can only check two training priorities. So, Okay. Um... What else do we want to do? Okay, we did training, we did research. We don't need to build any ships. We have one turn of funds left and then we'll have to pause some things. Just briefly go over preferences. I prefer to pause on like everything, which we might change because this is a Let's Play series. I like to micromanage quite a lot. Everything here probably makes sense. Just it's a lot of log information or auto pause stuff. Realism setting is kind of important to talk about. Um, if you're in real admirals mode, you can't control. So let's just start from the bottom up. Captain's mode means you can control every ship. And I guess that's it. You can just control every ship. So you have the most um, ability to control your ships. They won't, because when, when the other modes are activated, there's possible signaling errors where <laughs> your ships won't go where they're instructed to go. Like they didn't see the flag correctly because this era they use signal signaling flags to um, communicate with each other. Anyway, um, ad then rear admiral's mode is you can control some of the ships around you as long as they're in sight of you. And I, th and I don't know what, I think admiral's mode is even more restrictive, but the only ones I've played with are these bottom two. So I, I do rear admiral's mode. One of the reasons why I don't do captain's mode is because it does um, decrease the amount of victory points you get if you successfully win a battle. So it's better for me, I think. I have enough control at rear admiral's mode that it's fine. Here's a turret flash fire. This can instantly sink your ship if your turret is hit. You can reduce it to make things not instantly blow up if you want. I've turned off all my sound effects. They're <laughs> not spectacular anyways. And I don't know what this is. I mean, it's line of sight, I guess, but um, I have no idea. And these are the things I've chosen to show. That's just what I show. Um, and I pause game on like everything. <laughs> so, okay, that's preferences, design ship, mobilization. This is just when you go to war, it'll set all your ships to active, but it doesn't matter to us. Training we did, and I probably won't ever build a fort they have been modified in this patch, I've heard, to be like more effective, but I've never been in a battle where the coastal batteries actually helped. So for me, they're just useless. In fact, on the top panel here, we can see that we have the map, which I've shown. 
in service, which is our list of ships, probably the tab you'll have open the most often. Under construction, another important one. Submarines, which I barely use. The only time I used it is really <laughs> because the general or the president or somebody told me I had to build them and then you do it. Here's coastal fortifications. I don't, I don't even look at this stuff. Now you can see the maintenance cost is so low. It's just like compared to a 4 million or sorry, my monthly budget is about 6.5 million. This is pennies for that. But I still don't find it very useful. Um, like a four inch battery doesn't even have much range. So even this 5,600, although it's so insignificant, it might not even be worth the money. Because four inch, that's so, they'd, they'd have to get so close to be fired at, and even a four inch battery, I'm not sure it'll even do anything. But I'll leave them just for the time being so we can see that maybe we will be able to see one of the four inch coastal batteries and you'll be able to see for yourself how pathetic they are. <laughs> And ship sunk, thank god we don't have any in there, and hopefully we leave it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, good, so I think we're ready to advance our first turn. I'll just go ahead and save for the heck of it. And eventually I want my intelligence at, um, up to medium, but for now we'll leave it low. So we have our enhanced training is going to cost even more, but we still have one monthly balance, and that's fine. I, I expect that our yearly budget should go up from... 76 it should be increasing from here just because um, uh, We'll be increasing our prestige which will give us more money and I'll always be trying to choose the actions to get higher yearly budget Okay, next turn So France has just constructed a whole bunch of things and nobody else did anything Well, you were behind France. You should have done those in the last phase Okay, there we've had it. That's a turn. It's so simple, right? Uh, all right, so let's first call, go back to under construction. I'm gonna have to pause quite a few of these things. So it looks like the Denver, although these ships were all left under construction at the same time, they all have different months to be completed. So let's halt construction of this one. Halt construction of this one. And we'll halt construction of our battleship as well. <laughs> okay, good. So that's that. The faster you get the ships out from this area, the faster you get rid of this huge monthly cost. So it's better to try to complete them as fast as possible. And uh, that's all we need to do. We're waiting for little pop-ups to appear, which, which allow us to dictate our fate. So um, these um, starting values, by the way, are slightly random because I've had different starting values several times I've played new games, so. Germany's jumping on to the let's build new ships phase, as is Great Britain. And France again. Hmm. And nothing for this turn, so again we'll just go ahead and skip the turn again. Oh wow, they're building another battleship. Well, of all the people, I guess we can go over Al Almanac, which is pretty useful. It's nice to keep this uh, open from time to time. So we can see that the naval budget, <laughs> it's kind of absurd. This is why you may not want to play with historical game budgets because it is pretty lopsided. When you don't play with, uh, when you play with the normal game, the balanced one, excuse me. Ah. I mean, look at this, this is insane. Great Britain has eight battleships. Now I suppose those should be spread around. We can actually see, I'll go ahead and click around the map and we'll be able to look at where the different ships are, but this is the difference. If you play with the game, the normal game budget, this will be a lot more balanced, but this is just um, extremely lopsided. You can see Great Britain has basically double the naval budget of the second best person, which is me, and I have double, nearly double the budget of the next best people, which are France and Russia. And from there it spirals down even worse for poor Japan and Italy. So I don't know how they're going to be able to afford any kind of ships. But the cool thing is, from this map, uh, from this, we can actually see the size of different ships. So I did choose the tonnage of my ship to be 14,000, but note that I could, I could have actually gotten away with choosing a 15,000 tonnage ship because the game starts with the ones already built, already built. 
Now that means I wouldn't have been able to build the one I have in construction at my own shipyard. I would have had to use like Great Britain's or France's yards because I think France also has, yeah, a large dock size. But the three that I start with, I didn't have to specify how or where they were built. I could have just made them, I could have made them like 18 thou Uh, I don't actually know if there's a cap, but I could have made them larger than um, my dock size, I think. So we can see that most people build more heavy cruisers than I did, but uh, their heavy cruisers are pretty light. It's really not that bad. So I maybe, did I possibly overspend on heavy cruisers? <laughs> 12,000, oh this, this one's 10,200. So France built pretty heavy, heavy cruisers. But the rest of them, yeah, they look a lot lighter. I mean, hey, my light cruisers are 6,000 each, so, hmm. Anyway, the Almanac has a lot of useful information, so you can see kind of what ships you're up against. And you can also click on individual people. It'll show their technical, technological, or I guess they say technical development. Um, and then it lists all the same stuff. It shows you where your resources are coming from and the naval guns you've researched. So we've researched 12 inch, or Germany's only researched up to 11 inch. This was all available on the start screen as well, but. And here's, you can see, uh, a summary of their ships. So the Almanac's nice, especially if you're about to go to war with somebody, it's nice to compare, okay, if I was going to war with Germany, I have one more battleship, they have another heavy cruiser, I have more light cruisers, etc. The last thing is, I had that triggered a memory of something I was gonna explain, but since I, oh yeah, the map. So if you rest your cursor, you can see, it, the United States has this many ships here, Great Britain has that many ships there. If we go to Northern Europe, surely, yes. Russia has its main battle fleet here, as does Germany, as does Great Britain. Now one sad thing is, although tensions have increased and I don't know why, there was no pop-up to explain, sometimes just tensions do adjust themselves, um, but without your knowledge or a notification of why it happens, which is a little confusing, but um, another unfortunate thing is you cannot unfortunately have wars between ai nations and other ai nations so you'll never see it i don't you don't ever see other ships getting sunk only the only wars are the ones involving you and i hope that gets patched later because it would be nice to see other wars other like happening um it would make the game feel more <laughs> alive I guess the world would feel more, much more alive but for the time being that's just something you should know that it's basically you against the world and your victory condition is basically not to be fired so you'll be fired if your prestige drops too low and also I guess that can happen if you're in, if the unrest level gets too high then the people like overthrow you which is I guess the same as being fired from low prestige so those are kind of like the two the ultimate factors involved and how you gain prestige is obviously you have to win wars, you have to do the right thing, so it's an obvious mechanic behind it that if you win battles, you're not going to be fired. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and jump to the next turn after this. Okay, good, so we got our destroyer commission and our first pop-up, great. One of our cruisers has run aground on the shore of a minor nation while performing an illicit intelligence operation. Uh-oh. They've threatened to impound the ship. What is our reaction? Now, when you get these pop-ups, which is a lot of fun, these pop-ups are pretty fun, you rest your cursor over the action you're considering taking, and it says prestige plus, tension plus plus, which means that if I choose this option, my prestige will go up, but so will a lot of tension. There's um, one plus, there's two pluses, and there's three pluses. So this is a pretty serious tension escalation. Otherwise, we can do this, which means we'll lose prestige, which I really don't want to lose right now. And we could also just do let them examine the ship. Well, I'm kind of interested in seeing who's going to get this tension. Typically, I like to target my attention against somebody in particular, but I can't risk losing prestige, and prestige also um, affects your budget. So I'm going to do this. 
And we gain tension with uh, all the wrong people, unfortunately. I'm okay with going to war with France, but basically I'm okay with any of these four and not these two. And these are the two, well, these are the three that gain tension. Okay, then there's basically been a research setback in pressure hole, which I suppose is probably, uh, is that damage control? I'm not sure. Okay, so new updates. Um, we got one of our ships, which should help our monthly balance because that ship is now, this ship is now only costing 11,000. And you can see the WU here, AF is active fleet and WU is working up. So generally you wanna leave the ships that are working up in their working up state, don't move them until they become fair, which happens when they become active fleet, which will happen on its own. So in like a two turns or so, it'll say, the DD McDonough has finished its working up. Since we uh, don't really have the funds, I think, to, to unhalt anything, we're just going to go ahead and continue for another turn. So now we have the Paul Jones and the Lawrence. Germany has gotten an increasing budget. So do we get an increase in budget? Yeah, actually you see our yearly budget went up from I think 77 to 78, and I think that's a factor of prestige. Oh, it's also a factor of tension, so it could be the tension. And I guess France's tension rose. I wasn't paying specific attention, <laughs> attention. <laughs> but it says tension with France is seven. I thought, I don't know what the tension level here is. I thought it was 10 to get to complete, but maybe it's 12. Anyways, when you get to this line, war will be declared between the nations. And again, I'm okay going to war with France. If we look at the Almanac, France has two battleships, three heavy cruisers, but their heavy cruisers are around 10,200. I think one-on-one, -on -one, my heavy cruiser will win. One-on-one, -on -one, my battleship should win since their battleships are only... Well, they are 15,000, but I feel like um, I'm just a better... I'm better than them, right? So uh, I think we would win. I'm not so sure about, okay, so technically Germany is in worse shape than France budget-wise and ship-wise too, but I just, my experience with the Germans was not good in my last gameplay. They were the only war that I actually struggled in, um, so, well, I'd rather fight the French for that reason. Okay, but we don't have anything else to do this turn. We have about a million for a monthly budget, so I might just unhalt one of these ships just for one more turn, get the Des Moines uh, closer to completion, and then we'll halt it again. Okay, good. Oh, good. <laughs> so we've been asked to blow up one of uh, France's capital ships. And we can either, it, don't, it doesn't tell us what the possible outcomes are. Wow, interesting. We can either try to blow up the ship by saying that's that's fine, go you young enterprising young people. Or we could say that's uh, those kind of covert tactics are not part of our naval traditions. Hmm. It's a really good question. I and they don't say what the outcome is. I I think the United States, I'm trying to think what would the United States do? I don't think the United States has any such qualms about underhand tactics especially at this point in time. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that anyway. I should have just chosen it so we could see what the effect is. That would have been much more interesting. But okay, too, low, too late. And we've, even though we're doing the construction, is that? Um, I forgot, what is the messages here? So I'm an idiot, did I, no? How did my naval budget not go down much more than this? I'm confused. I haven't been paying attention closely enough, but somehow, well, I'm just gonna let it keep going as it is. Good, so our first research breakthrough, which means we've researched something. Gradual national accuracy improvement. Okay, so this is not a technology that we need to add to our ships. This is just a general improvement to accuracy. And that's why you can see I really like the fire control. All right, we also got gradual rate of fire improvement, which is 
also very good. So you can see why turret and gun mountings are also really important. And now the McDonald has finished her working up. So that's good, we'll go ahead and end this turn. Good, so the Columbia's commissioned, which means we should have a huge amount of money available. And we got Krupp Armor, which is our first weight savings on armor, which is excellent. Finish working up, and nothing new, just some new ships. 18 knots is their battleship, and 26 knots is their destroyer. So you can see we're just a, a smidge faster, which is um, the way I like it. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes in this video. We've kind of seen how to start to get the game underway. Um, we'll probably end up going to war with France, but that won't happen now. We'll see if maybe it comes up in the next episode. But until then, take care.